This is going to be a quick guide on how to set up a Linux jump server. So just for the tools that I'm using, I am using Windows Terminal, which I highly recommend. It's great. Here's an example. You can open multiple tabs. You can have a PowerShell console, command prompt window, your WSL installation, and if you happen to have an Azure account, you can get a tab for that as well. And it's much nicer and easier to use than the built-ins. The other installation I'm using is Windows Subsystem Linux. So if you just search in the Windows Store for WSL, you'll find all the possible installations as well as just doing a search for Ubuntu. So there's three versions available. The regular Ubuntu Photo version number gets updated every time there's a new stable release. And then the other two are the latest stable releases. So in 2204, we'll have the next one. And once you install that, you can get a little window here and you have your little Win Linux shell open in Windows. So with both of those things installed, I can then proceed to my Windows terminal and use Ubuntu from in here. So as you can see, I am in my Ubuntu shell on my Windows machine. From here, I can SSH to our jump server. As you can see, that's our team name, Angry Nerds. And from here, I can SSH to the file server and do any types of configurations that I need. So for example, I can see all the Samba configurations that we have set up. And to set all of this up, we're going to need a couple of things. First, we have to go into our remote desktop session. And we need to create a new server and call it whatever your team name is with uh, Jumpbox. And by convention, the main Jumpbox we log into ends in .254. So we set this one up to be 253. And you need to open up the SSH service and enable it. So as you can see, we have set the IP to be 253. We have set our SSH port to be 444. We chose any non-reserved port over 1023. And as you can see from secure socket command here, we have SSH running and it's listening on port 444. And the service is active and running. So with all of that working, that's how we're able to log into the jump box. Once you have this all set up, you need to message your emerging tech instructor, let him know what the IP address of your server and the port number are that he, you want him to forward to so that you can actually log in remotely. You will need your VPN enabled for this so that it can resolve the names and access the internal resources at the school. And to set all of this up, you can see here, so if we do an NS lookup of ET underscore R1, it returns the address 1050 1050. So we're going to use that address to connect to. And to do all of this in your home directory, you can use putty if you want, but it's kind of ugly. Uh, it's much nicer to use a Ubuntu shell, which comes with an SSH client installed. And if you go from your home directory to .ssh, what you need to set up is a configuration file. And this solves a lot of problems. So let's say you're at work and you're given 10 servers that you need to manage. And each of these servers have a different IP address, a different port number, and a different SSH key. It becomes very difficult to remember all of these and near impossible. So the way to solve this problem is you set up a configuration file with only read and write access for the user. No one else should have access to this. And inside of that file, you're going to set up something like this. So host is whatever name you want to assign to this. It's essentially an alias, a tag, flag, whatever you want to call it. The host name is the address where this SSH server is reachable. And with our jump server, for example, I just named this jump. The address is 1050 1050, which will get forwarded to our server. Our username was angry nerd and the port that got forwarded for us was 33452. So this is the port number you'll get back from Dennis. And then you can specify your SSH key if you have one set up. Otherwise, you'll just have to use your username and password. So once this is set up, I'll give an example here. This is my Raspberry Pi on my home network. It's on the 
168.298 address, username, defaults pi, port is 4182. Instead of having to enter all of this by going pi 298 and then port 4182, and then I'm logged into the Raspberry. Instead of having to do all of that, you can simply do SSH pi. In this case, we're going to do the SSH jump, which logs me into the jump server. And you can see we set a banner for when we log in, showing us that we're logged into our Angry Nerd server. And from here, we have another, if we go into the SSH file, I mean directory, we can see that we have set up our RSA key. And we have another config file. And from here, uh, then config. Here we have all of our other servers configured. So our DNS server, our Linux client, our file server, our web server. So from here, we can simply do a jump to SSH file server. It actually tab completes, which is neat. Um, exit, or you can do SSH, in this case, the web server, and log into that, or SSH the client, and log into that. So all of this is configured and really easy to get into. So hope this helps and have fun.